Don't miss out. Pick up your Kiyu at Big Bad Toy Store at the link in the description. Dragon Ball Horror Kaiju and more. Steven's Toy Reviews. Hello there, collectors. It's Steven here, and I am proud to bring you my review of the Soul of Chogokin GX103 MFS3 Type 3 Multipurpose Fighting System Kiyu. That's right, folks. The Millennium Era Mecha Godzilla comes thundering into Tamashi Nation's flagship lineup as the first Godzilla related character in the line. And when this figure was revealed, a lot of folks just immediately assumed that this would be an SH Monster Arts release with a couple of extra bells and whistles. Well, guess what? The Solo Chogokin lineup, as I said, is Tamashi Nation's flagship line because when Bandai does a robot, they do it really, really well when they put their mind to it. So, when it comes to this figure, is the MSRP about $350 in the US? Of course it is. However, is this just a blown up SH Monster Arts figure, notably one of the best in the line? Or is this going to be contender for figure of the year? The answer, yes. To which, both. Let's take a look to see why this one is going to be worth adding into your collection. Quite the intro there, huh? Yeah, yeah, I, I did that like 10 different times. So anyway, for the actual looks of this guy, I will definitely have to say that Kiyu, I'm gonna slip and say Kiryu a couple times just because K-I-R-Y-U, also Mechagodzilla, whatever, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, this figure looks astonishing. And if you thought that the detail and the quality control for the SH Monster Arts release, which again, this is not, was really good, then congratulations, this is a step above that. Honestly, I'm just kind of retreading myself for all of the previous reviews because the silver paint across this figure absolutely by no means is sloppy in any particular spot whatsoever. There is no paint goop, there is nothing that is going to be out of place. Even as I'm going through my macro photography and I'm looking at it up close and personal, it all just looks good. You may note that back for the SH Monster Arts releases for all three of them, the hands sort of look like they had flash markings on them and they kind of got a little goopy. Mm -mm, not the case here. We have some extra decals that are found here and there and the MFS3 on the chest looks even better. Of course, we are going to have some finer details like the cabling that's going to be found in between the plating of Mechagodzilla here. That all looks great. And quite frankly, everything looks good. The only minor issue is that if you look really, really close at the dorsal plates and the plastic right underneath the dorsal plates, there is just a minor change in the coloration between the two. I can't tell if that's just because of the type of plastic or the fact that they are removable, the dorsal plates, but nevertheless, that's not my camera playing tricks on you. Now, for Soul of Chogokin figures, it is, you know, a die cast lineup. So from what I'm able to tell, it seems like the feet and the ankle guards, those are going to be die cast. I do believe that the joints for the ankles are going to be die cast as well. It sort of feels like the shins are die cast, which is good. And then I'm not quite sure where else we may have die cast, but this figure is absolutely hefty and it can hold a pose with all of that awesomeness. So does he look great? Yeah. How does he move? Even better. So, <laughs> that, enge that engineering for Kiyu here. Um, as you can see, it is just fine. And as a matter of fact, if you are familiar with the SH Monster Arts, nearly, nearly one-to-one. -one. So let's go ahead and get our Machine Dragon back into a more so neutral pose. And let's go ahead and talk about this beauty. So we have the jaw, which is going to be on a hinge. It opens and closes. We know exactly what that's about. Now, there is a light up feature, which we're going to talk about in a second. So that does minimally restrict the articulation for the head, as well as with the neck movement because of the plating of the armor here for this version of Mecha Godzilla. But don't worry, we can twist and turn from side to side with a whole host of ball joints and raise and lower his head. So we can look down about that far and look up about that far. We're gonna talk about the waist joint so we can come back to how good the neck is and how he, how far he can look up and down. But we can rock from side to side a little bit um, just because of the design. You can see these little bumps here. They do collide in with the collar, if you will. For the shoulders, listen up folks. We do have swivels, but they ratchet. So we don't have a fluid range of movement, but we have specific degrees. 
So that is something to keep in mind, okay? Now, otherwise, we do have hinges, whoa, and the ability to pop the arms out. We'll talk about that more in the accessory section. But anyway, yes, we have hinges so we can raise and lower the arms, as you can see there. Now, for a bicep swivel, it's more so going to be found in the elbows where they attach into the bicep, so that's good. And we do have a hinge. Oh, do we have a hinge, brother? We do have a double hinge elbow hinge which is great now from the sh monster art that would pretty much be it but that is not the case here why because let me see if i can just do it with one hand yes as you can see here we do have a swivel at the forearm as well which is amazing now it isn't really a ball joint it's just a swivel for the wrists we do have a peg that plugs into the forearm so we do get a little bit of swivel movement then we do have a hinge and then we have a swivel where the hand plugs in so we get plenty of range of movement so we hinge this way then we have to use a swivel in the forearm to turn the hinge around and then we can articulate at the hand part wrist you know what i'm talking about anyway four keep this out don't go in for the torso what do we have well realistically speaking it's just going to be one ball joint there's going to be no waist joint here but because of that ball joint in the torso for the effective ab crunch, eh, we can move him up and down and rock him sort of left and right, but it's more so going to be for twisting side to side. It's going to be for micro adjustments more than anything else. It really isn't a full on point of articulation. So it's a little bit more restricted than the SH Monster Arts, I would say. But as you can see here, we can get some decent movement out of it. So Kiyu can actually look down about that far as I close the door there. And he can look up about that far when you're factoring that in. The doors for the Absolute Zero Cannon, they do open and close on hinges, as you can see there. And we'll come back to those in just a second. So for the hips, um, rather confusing for me, almost in break territory. Why is that? Well, we do have ball joints, which allow you to kick forward and back, uh, roughly about that far back and about that far forward. Though do take note, there is a possibility you may accidentally pop these tubes out. That is going to happen for sure with the tubes at the head. We'll come back to that. But if that does happen, you can actually use this tool to help you pop them back in and feed them into the little hole. Now, the reason why I say it's a little bit limited for the hips is because if you just naturally try to push them out, you're gonna feel some resistance. What I find to be helpful is utilize the ball joint that is there to sort of twist them inward and then twist them out. You get a bit more range of movement there to get him to sort of do the splits. He can't really do that too well. But nevertheless, I think once you have this in hand, you'll see what I mean. Now, it's a feature from the SH Monster Arts. We do have this little hinge here that opens up a jet booster which this is how you're supposed to do it um, hopefully it'll let me do it live there we go all right so we open that up and then we can just kick that booster backwards or even forwards if we would want it's going to be the same on the other side for brevity you that's what i'm going to tell you Oh, we have two points of articulation in the knee, which is actually going to feature a swivel where the lower portion of the leg plugs in and the kneecap is on a hinge as well. Very nice. Ankle guard, gonna be on a hinge or a swivel, depending on how you look at things. So that's nice. The ankles are actually going to have the same articulation as the SH Monster Arts, which was amazing. So we have a hinge that allows you to push the feet forward and back. Yay, awesome. And then we do have another hinge, which allows you to utilize ankle rocker movement. So, Kiyu, please work with me here. Show the fine folks at home. Okay, so we can rock the foot one side and we can rock it to the other. And then we do have here, it looks like an actual swivel and not a ball joint compared to what I believe the SH Monster Arts had. So, plenty, plenty of movement there. Then, to sum it all up, we do have the wonderful articulated ball jointed tail which is going to have ball joints pretty much all the way up to there there are a couple of spots where it doesn't really seem like there's going to be a ball joint but nevertheless that is fine so for Kiyu's articulation honestly it is fantastic um, you may note that these did have points of articulation on the sh monster arts they do not here um, overall, this figure is amazing, and considering all of the features that this thing has, I'm surprised they had it move so well. 
Now, let's go ahead and talk about the light up features for this guy. I'm gonna show you how we do everything real quick. So first, let's go ahead and disassemble some of the stuff. The absolute zero cannon, the chest piece is going to be very easy to do. Um, I'm gonna show you in the instructions as well because we're gonna go through them. Uh, but here, all you have to do is pop this off. If you get this right out of the box, it's gonna have a little pull tab. You just pull it and then you flip the switch. So by default, it's gonna be off. You just flip it to on. Then you open up the doors, right? And then you're kind of like, well, what do I do? You hit that button. There you go. It looks like it is uh, stuttering or flickering here. That does not happen in real life whatsoever. It lasts about that long and it is a nice solid color with transitions there. Unfortunately, the way cameras work and lenses, you know, I can't really show you more than that, but you just take a Phillips head screwdriver, you pop this out, even tells you the kind of batteries that you need, which is going to be three LR41 15 volt. So there you go. This has a nice actual lock in. You can hear that now. For the head, so you're going to remove the eyepiece and then there's going to be a little switch. That's really cool. Okay, now the way that that actually is going to work, and I saved this part for last in the recording process because this is admittedly a bit of a pain. You are going to have to, oh, it's admittedly a bit difficult. Ah, you have to pop his head off and then fresh out of the box, there's going to be a little pull tab. You just pull that out. But otherwise, you can see there if we zoom in, just a little bit, we'll refocus as well. You can see it's two LR41 15 volt batteries. All right, there we go. And then with that, uh, you can replace them just by doing the screwdriver there. Uh, this is gonna be your on and off switch. So we either have on or off. And then we have the different eye parts, which I'm gonna go ahead and show you here in just a little bit. And we're good to go. Now, you do have to fish these tubes back into the holes on Kiyu's neck along with the ball joint getting seated correctly into that joint, which can be a bit of a pain. So with that being said, let's actually go ahead and snap for my editing purposes, show you what all of the light up effects look like when we have them one on one. So here's going to be the eye pieces. So that actually is going to carry on over into the accessory. So by default, here is going to be the normal eye parts that we get solid yellow, off and then here's going to be them with the lights on we do get the red eye parts which is kiyu going berserk and here's them with the lights on honestly kind of weak but nevertheless it's there here we have the rebuilt kiyu eye parts yes we have another set of eyes that come with lines in them and this is when kiyu goes back into battle and this is with the lights on cool for the Absolute Zero Cannon, here is going to be a nice steady shot with the yellow light that transitions then on over into blue. The only critique I have for the light up feature is going to be the Absolute Zero Cannon. It should absolutely have an on and off feature for the individual colors. Otherwise, it's good. Now, with that, let's go ahead and move on over to the actual accessories for Kiyu, which, yay! smooth transition. So we already took a look at the eyes and the light up feature so we can go ahead and move on over from there. So we have the battle damage parts which were included in the Shinigawa final battle version of Kiyu. We do have the full armament set which includes the back unit and the rail guns which is pretty neat. We actually have a hanger for this guy which is amazing and with that hanger comes a Tamashi support stage for him. And we get a minifigure of someone who I'm sure holds no plot importance to Godzilla against Mechagodzilla whatsoever. Go ahead and fry me in the comments. The only accessory not pictured here is a little ring part that goes on the right shoulder that is used to block the uh, mug gap for the articulation. All right, so for the rest of the accessories, let's go over the hanger. You are going to have to build that. It doesn't come pre-built out of the box, but it's very easy to do. And actually the way that I have everything set up here is exactly how you're going to be pulling it out of the tray. There's literally no difference. I just put book the pieces out of the, the, the tray and I, I put them here. So I'm building it as it would be uh, taking it out of the box. It's pretty simple and straightforward. The only issue that I have with this is in terms of visibility and how it looks. 
is that for the pillars that are going to be behind Kiyu, uh, they're kind of bland and I don't know, they're not very creative, but I suppose that for building purposes, they're somewhat modular because you can use the left as the right and the right is left. I think you know what I'm saying. Also for the backpack mount of Kiyu, it's just kind of floating there with that Tamashi stage support arm and it actually doesn't hang up anywhere. I suppose you could get it on one of those pillars, but nevertheless, that is what it is meant to do. The actual texturing for the base of the uh, base, yeah, uh, is nice and it has a nice mechanical feel to it and it goes really well with Kiyu, but in notion of that, most Solo Chogokin figures that I have or I have seen usually feature some sort of nameplate, which is not featured here for this release whatsoever. Getting Kiyu on the display base is rather simple, however the support stand for him that is meant to be that little pillar in the middle is supposed to line up with a small section of his crotch, and unfortunately it really doesn't do too much aside from when you are able to get him to fit on there perfectly, it just sort of suspends him a little bit. So so eh, be careful with that. But nevertheless, something to keep in mind is that the support arm for the backpack unit can actually be used with any other Tamashi stage bases that you have. So this way, Kiyu can send it flying. Now, let's go ahead and equip Kiyu with all of our armaments that we have. So we do have the arm rail guns, which again, if you have the SH monster arts, you know what to do here. However, there's an important step. There is a little bead button part that is used so this way it can be attached onto the support hanger base and you're going to want to take that off. There is going to be that little sword, spear, whatever you would prefer to call it, stinger blade that comes out of the braille gun. If you want to attach that, you can, and then there's going to actually be a wire cable that plugs into his forearm. There is already a little piece that's already attached to the forearm, so pop that out and make sure that you don't lose it. Follow what I'm doing here step by step. For the backpack unit, there are going to be three specific dorsal plates, which are going to be the one at the base of the neck, and then there are going to be the two that are diagonally to the left and to the right down that need to be removed in order for this backpack unit to safely be placed on Kiyu's back. It does snap into place, however, just keep in mind that it is a rather loose fit, so there is a chance that you won't break anything. Yay! Yay, you like good clearance. Also keep in mind there is that little black piece that is used for the Tamashi stage stand, so you can pull that off and you do not use that. Now if we're taking a look at the finer details for everything, honestly it just is on par with the actual action figure in and of itself with no real issues and everything is great. It is a nice GameCube color, which that's not a slight against it whatsoever. The only thing I think would be really cool is if we had some sort of missile effect. Now, so this way we can fill up a little bit more time, something that I found interesting is that there is a little plate that is underneath the upper part of Kiyu's back. So not counting that, the part that you wiggle around, we're not talking about that. The part where you remove the dorsal plates, all of those dorsal plates can actually be removed. So if you don't feel safe with snapping this in, you can do that. All right, now let's go ahead and talk about the battle damaged parts, the Shinagawa final battle scene. So you are going to pop off Kiyu's right arm, and this is the part where you're going to see that little ring that helps block the gap. So if you want that, you have that ability. Now you are going to use that, so this way you have again the ability to block the gap for the battle damaged arm, which has the wires all exposed, and then you have the battle damaged absolute zero maser blaster cannon which hey it looks all wiry and gutty as well no light up feature since it's broken then you have this uh, b character here which you know i guess stands on kiyu at the end of the movie again i'm pretty sure there's no importance here for this character and what you do is it's actually very important that you're paying attention here because if you don't do it correctly you're going to break it so you have to remove the chest component of Kiyu, and then you are going to slide the little clavicle part off, and then you're going to slide the new one on, but be careful because you have to line it up in both places so you don't break anything. It's a Kane, I know. Whew! All right, so with that being said, that is everything this Mecha Godzilla comes with. No 360 spin view because there's just so much that I've talked about already. And honestly, 
I mean, it's amazing. The only other thing that I could think of, again, is going to be the dedicated on and off switch for the yellow or blue lights for the Zero Cannon, and then maybe an effect part or two. The last thing that I do want to go over here is going to be the actual instruction booklet, which does appear to have information on Mechagodzilla 3 proper, since it seems like they go over some different ideas for the concept art and the actual suit for Kiyu. Additionally, it looks like there's some sort of interview or something that is here. I'm going to try to see if I can get some sort of translation for that, which looks really cool. And of course, the actual instructions. I do a quick flip through of it here. Now, let's go ahead and move on over to a size comparison so you can see just how big this guy is. Uh, yeah, he's not going to fit in with any of your SH Monster Arts figures. He's going to be standing on his own, but that is okay because this is definitely, absolutely deserving of his own shelf space. But as we end the size comparison here, the number one thing folks were talking about, is this going to go head to head with the SH Monster Arts Kiyu? No, however, here's gonna be a 360 spin view of both of them side by side. So you get a good idea of what these two would look like if you had them both on your shelf or if you just wanted to have a comparison between them. Overall, I think these both can absolutely coexist and they should in your collection. So buy now, skip, or wait for a deal. Honestly, there's no skip here. You're only waiting for a deal if you're comfortable with hopefully waiting for a sale to happen on this guy and you can afford to wait some time to maybe save a couple of bucks. Uh, however, at the end of the day, this is worth the purchase. There are a couple of small things. Again, I talked about the light up stuff and we could get some neat effect parts, but overall, I think that, you know, this is a good solo Chogokin release. Gypsy Danger. Yeah, back then I was feeling the sting a little bit because there were a few things that just didn't quite hit home. It didn't land perfectly. But for this one, honestly, it's a large SH Monster Arts figure with lights. And quite frankly, I think for this one, more so than like, let's say the Kokyo Kyoko or even Gypsy Danger. Mwah. Kaiju fans, we eaten good with this release. If you're a fan of Kiyu, if you're a fan of diecast figures, which this has, then congratulations. We have a contender for figure of the year. Hey collectors, that's going to wrap up the video today. And as always, thanks for watching, commenting, sharing, subbing. It all helps. I always enjoy responding to comments, so be sure to drop one down below and I will respond if I can. I do have supporters on Patreon as well, and each review gets an end card to show who is supporting each month, so here are the end cards. Camera batteries, SD cards, even hard drives, it's not possible without that support, so thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Here's the final end card, so this way you can click subscribe, check out another video, or even check out the social media outlets if you want to. Before we end today, as in the description, there may be paid ad space, affiliate links, or product samples that were sent out in this video, so please check out the STR ad disclosure. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.